There's nothing as powerful as an idea whose time has come. Today could be that moment for many in my audience. Sometimes it's the first time someone hears a voice that sparks a search for a better life, for meaning, for skills, for discipline. Or perhaps you're one of many voices they've heard, but today your voice is the one that makes the lights go on, changing their lives forever. This change can be triggered by a delightful experience or a tragic one. It can be the day that changes everything. For me, such a day came when a Girl Scout knocked on my door when I was 25 years old. She gave an impressive presentation about Girl Scout cookies. I wanted to buy some, but they cost $2 and I didn't have the money. Not wanting to admit this, I lied, saying I had plenty of cookies at home. After she left, I realized how low I had sunk, lying to a Girl Scout. I promised myself that day it would never happen again. That moment of disgust was a turning point for me. It was the day I decided I didn't want to live like that anymore. Disgust can be a powerful motivator. It drives you to say, I've had it. I don't want to feel like this anymore. This is the last day I will be this way. Making the decision to change is monumental and often lasts a lifetime. These decisions can start a process that is valuable and as you see good results, you decide to continue. When I started revolutionizing my economic life at 25, early success locked me in for a lifetime. Disgust is a powerful emotion that can drive you to say, I don't want to live like this anymore. This kind of resolve combined with the decision to change sets you on a new path. For me, reading books and starting a program of personal development was life changing. I built one of the best libraries of life-changing books. Having support is crucial. Two of the most powerful words in the world are, let's do it. It's powerful to say, I'm going to do it, but it's even more powerful to say, let's do it working together with like-minded people creates synergy. For instance, if you want to change your health, finding a partner and meeting regularly to discuss progress can be invaluable. The camaraderie and inspiration that come from working together make a significant difference. All my enterprises since I was young have involved teamwork. The resolve to face the unknown and adapt when necessary is key. If something isn't working, maybe you need a new approach. Persistence is important, but so is adaptability. If you've been at something for years with no results, consider a new approach. Motions provide the fuel for change, but your philosophy of life forms the foundation. For me, several philosophical changes were necessary when I began my new journey at 25. These same philosophies can also change your life. One philosophy that changed my life was understanding that profits are better than wages. No one taught me this in high school or college. At 25, I finally learned that wages make you a living, but profits make you a fortune. This realization was life-changing. My mentor, Mr. Shoaf, taught me that you can start working on your fortune part-time. This concept excited me. Working part-time on my fortune while working full-time on my job gave me a sense of purpose and direction. The magic of part-time work is thrilling. You can work on profits part-time, and it doesn't take long to see results. I aimed to earn as much part-time as I did full-time and achieved this in less than six months. My second goal was to make twice as much part-time as I did full-time, and I reached this in less than a year. The excitement of working on my fortune was incredible. Another crucial philosophy is understanding that it's not what happens that determines your future, but what you do about what happens. We are all in the same boat, facing the same winds. The difference in our destinations is the set of our sales. Learning to set a better sale each year than the last is the key. Correcting past errors and picking up new disciplines can change your life dramatically. If you wish, you can drastically change the next few years of your life from the last few. This opportunity is available to anyone. If you don't know you can change, you might go year after year without much improvement. But if you realize the possibility, you can start today. Here's another vital philosophy for things to change. You have to change. Don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. Don't wish for fewer problems, wish for more skills. Challenges are necessary for growth. Develop wisdom to overcome challenges and you can achieve remarkable things. No matter what happens, curiosity and an insatiable appetite for learning are also crucial. Keep this curiosity alive throughout your life. Understand how things work. Be curious about human behavior and always seek knowledge. This attitude will drive you to read, learn, and grow continuously. Finally, taking constructive criticism and refining your approach are essential. Accept feedback and use it to improve. Ask yourself what turns you on and what turns you off. Once you identify and address what's holding you back and embrace what drives you, you can achieve incredible things. Get enough reasons to be motivated and keep adding to them. Live as well as you can and strive to be the best for yourself and those you care about. Ten years from now, you will surely become someone. The big question is who? What are you becoming? If you start working on it now, 
you can soon take on a new direction to become the person you want to be. There's a very important question to ask 10 years from now. You will surely arrive somewhere. The question is where? To answer this and to determine the kind of person you want to be, you've got to get serious. What I would ask you to do starting today is to get excited about committing to positive, constructive actions that will make the changes in your life you want and lead you in the direction you desire. Get excited about your potential. Human capacity is usually not the problem. Little children can learn several languages we can learn to do the most incredible things. All we need is the time to do it. So it's not a matter of capacity, it's a matter of judgment, excitement, will, and wanting it badly enough. It's exciting to know that any day you wish, you can change your life. Any day you pick, you can make major changes. It doesn't ever have to be the same again. Knowing that you can intellectually and personally do the things that will make major changes in your life is exciting. There's so much to work on that if you don't get busy, time will pass. Five years from now, you'll end up where you don't want to be, wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, and being what you don't want to be. Now's the time to fix it. Here's number three, you've got to get going. All the things you've learned won't do you much good if you don't put them into action. In my management and leadership seminar, we teach game plans to put all the good things you've learned into action, economic action, social action, personal action, personal action. Learn how to make changes and actually do the work. Get going, that's the key. Some people are always learning but never take action. It's like the man who keeps bringing materials to the building site but never builds anything. If you do that long enough, they'll come and take you away. You've got to do something with what you've learned. You've got to take action. You've got to get going. One of the most important things to learn is how to design your day, week, weeks, and months so you take the proper action to get the return you're looking for, whether it's economic or personal. Get going, it's a major key. Now let me show you what triggers all emotions into activity that brings results. Results are the name of the game. Here it is action. Finally, you must do something about how you feel. Jesus, the master teacher, said, don't just be listeners, be doers. The world admires the doers. Whatever it takes to get you to try harder, read more, set your goals, and go for it. Here's the next attitude disease over caution. Some people will never have much because they are too cautious. You can be too reckless, but you can also be too cautious. This is called the timid approach to life. My caution was always the risk. Risk used to drive me right up the wall. I used to say, what if this happens? It's called the language of the poor. What if this happens? And on top of that, if this was to happen, look at the fix I'd be in and I'd better not try. I could always talk myself out of trying. What changed my whole life was discovering that it's all risky. The minute you were born, it got risky. If you think trying is risky, wait until they hand you the bill for not trying. If you think investing is risky, wait until you get the tab for not investing. It's all risky. Getting married is risky. Having children is risky. Going into business is risky. Investing your money is risky. It's all risky. I'll tell you how risky life is. You're not going to get out alive. The Englishman says, well, if that's the way it's going to work out, let's give it a go, right? That's what it's for, give it a go. Somebody says, yeah, but I'm looking for safety and security, fine. Then huddle in a corner. We'll cover you with a sheet, bring you three meals a day, and we'll protect you, feed you, look after you, and care for you. We won't let anything happen to you, and you'll probably live to be 100. The guy said, well, yeah, I'd live to be 100, but what a way to live, right? What a way to live safe and secure. Don't ask for security, ask for adventure. It's better to live 30 years full of adventure than 100 years safe in the corner. It's not important how long you live. What's important is how you live. Here's the next attitude disease, pessimism. Pessimism is the deadly disease of always looking on the bad side, the problem side, the difficult side, checking all the reasons why it can't be done. The poor pessimist leads an ugly life. He doesn't try to figure out what's right, he tries to figure out what's wrong. He doesn't look for virtue, he looks for faults. And when he finds them, he's delighted. How ugly this is. The poor guy looks through the window, doesn't see the sunset, he sees the specks on the window. And this is the poor guy who rushes up and says, I've got five good reasons why it won't work, he's so dumb he doesn't know all you need is one. He's got five. To the pessimist, the glass is always half empty. To the optimist, the glass is half full. Why would the same measure affect people two different ways? Answer it all depends on how you look at it. Our lives are mostly affected by the way we think things are, not the way they are. The way we think they are affects us most. There's a subject we don't have time to get into tonight called better thinking habits, one of the major things Mr. Shohaf taught me when I met him was that poor thinking habits keep most people poor. 
Not poor working habits. Most people work hard, but they don't think hard. And Schof taught me that the mind is like a factory, a mental factory. And whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. And that's what builds the economic, social, and financial fabric of your life. He quoted me a Bible phrase that says, as you think, so you become how awesome. When he talked about poor thinking habits, he had me. I used to start the day reading the morning newspaper. I mean, you can believe that or not. I'd get a cup of coffee and read the paper. I'd load up on wars and riots and murders and stabbings and killings and bank robberies and muggings and car wrecks and tragedies. I'd even read the back pages. I seemed to like that stuff for some weird reason. I'd load up on all that and then start the day. You can imagine the kind of days I used to have. You walk around on your financial knees, they call you economic P. The guy says, I want to be a great leader, wonderful. The first thing we do is follow him to his house. When we get there, we walk in and check his library first. Somebody says, well, why check his library? The reason is because what a man reads pours massive ingredients into his mental factory, and the fabric of his life is built from those ingredients. You would not believe what some people have got in their house to read. You would not believe it. One of the best dressed up words I know for a lot of it is trash. Can you imagine dumping a barrel of trash into this mental factory every day and coming out with a rich, dynamic, positive life? It can't be done. You might as well try making a cake with cement. The kids back in Danbury High School were asking me questions one day. I'm talking to the kids. Kids got good questions these days. One of them said to me, Mr. Rowan, how do you build the good life? I said, it's simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Here's how you build anything, select the right ingredients, keep out the wrong ingredients, and it starts with thought. Everything starts with thought. So you must be wise and careful what you think about because that starts everything. You've got to be wise and careful. I asked the kids what would happen if somebody dropped sugar in my coffee. They said, well, you'd be okay. I said, what if somebody dropped strike nine in my coffee? They said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct. Lesson one life is both sugar and strike nine. You've got to be careful, I said. What if my worst enemy drops in the sugar? They said, well, you'd be okay. I said, what if my best friend, even by accident, drops in the strike nine? They said, well, you'd be dead. I said, correct. Lesson two, watch your coffee. You've got to be careful, see, it doesn't matter who hands you the bad stuff. It doesn't matter where you get the bad stuff, it'll still do its damage on your bank account, wherever you get it. Mister, Shof gave me one of the greatest phrases when I first met him, he said, Jim, Every day, stand guard at the door of your mind. How important. Stand guard at the door of your mind and you decide what goes into your mental factory. Don't let anybody just dump anything they want into your mental factory because you've got to live with the results. Okay, here's the last disease and we're through with this list. In fact, we're almost through. Hang on. The last subject is very brief. The last disease, but this one is deadly engage in this one. Indulge in it even slightly. And you might as well forget the future because it's going to forget you. Complaining, crying, whining, griping, a Bible word called murmuring. See, that'll ace your future. Spend five minutes complaining and you have wasted five and you may have begun what's known as economic cancer of the bone. Surely they will soon haul you off into a financial desert and they let you choke on the dust of your own regret. I hope I said that well so you won't forget. It's a deadly disease. If you don't think it's bad, ask the children of Israel of Old Testament fame. Typical of us all, their story just happened to get in the book. The story says children of Israel were slaves. God performed a series of dazzling miracles and got them out. And now they're heading for the promised land. Remember the story? Heading for the promised land. Tragedy of the story, they never got there. Reason from day one, they started to complain. They griped about the water. They griped about the weather. They whined and cried and griped about the food. They griped about the leadership. They whined and cried because it was too far, too cold, too hot, too difficult, too miserable. I mean, they whined and whined and cried for years. Finally, God said, I've had it. Trip canceled or something like that. The story says they died in the desert, never got to the promised land, which I think means two things indulging in this long enough. You get your future canceled. And I guess it also means even God himself can only take so much. Remember, the key to changing your life starts with your mindset and the actions you take. Here are some final thoughts to help guide you on this journey. The most important step in changing your life is taking full responsibility for where you are. Blaming others or external circumstances won't help you move forward. Accept that your current situation is a result of your past actions and decisions and understand that your future will be shaped by what you do now. Without clear goals, you won't know what you're working towards. 
Write down what you want to achieve in specific measurable terms, break these goals down into smaller manageable steps, and create a timeline for achieving them. This will give you a clear roadmap to follow. Your attitude determines how you approach challenges and setbacks. A positive attitude doesn't mean ignoring problems, it means facing them with a mindset that looks for solutions and opportunities. Surround yourself with positive influences and stay away from negativity. Commit to lifelong learning. Whether it's through reading, attending seminars, or learning from mentors, continuously seek knowledge that will help you grow personally and professionally. The more you learn, the more you'll be able to adapt and seize new opportunities. Physical and mental health are crucial for achieving your goals. Exercise regularly, eat a balanced diet, get enough sleep, and practice stress management techniques. A healthy body and mind will give you the energy and clarity needed to pursue your goals effectively. Relationships are a key part of a fulfilling life. Surround yourself with people who support and encourage you. Be willing to help others achieve their goals as well. Strong relationships provide emotional support, different perspectives, and can open doors to new opportunities. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone. Taking risks is necessary for growth and achieving significant results. However, ensure that the risks you take are calculated. Do your research, weigh the pros and cons, and prepare as much as possible before making a move. Persistence is crucial, but so is adaptability. If something isn't working, be willing to change your approach. Don't be stubborn in your methods, but be relentless in your pursuit of your goals. Flexibility will allow you to navigate obstacles and find new paths to success. Cultivate a habit of gratitude. Regularly take time to reflect on what you're thankful for. This practice can shift your focus from what's lacking to what you have, fostering a positive mindset and greater overall happiness. Helping others can provide a sense of purpose and fulfillment. Whether through volunteering, mentoring, or sharing your knowledge, giving back can enhance your own life while making a positive impact on others. The journey to change your life is ongoing and requires consistent effort and dedication. It begins with a decision to take responsibility for your future and to take the necessary steps to create the life you desire. Embrace change, stay committed to your goals, and remember that the power to shape your destiny lies within you. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more content from Jim Rohn.